we're going to talk about Liliths and Ninlil. Are they the same? What is their purpose and their difference? And are they one and the same being or two separate beings? And my answer is none of those things are correct. And I will also, at the end of this video, provide a magical chant to call a Ninlil, spe Ninlil specifically. Now, I need to clarify and elaborate what I mean by Lilith and what I mean by Ninlil first. And this will involve a lot of history. Because I am great fan of history and I really studied history a lot before and I study it even more now and it is one of my passions. I even studied history at university for a time so I am really taking history seriously. And let me explain what I mean by Lilith who I consider to be Lilith according to history and archaeology and my personal practice as well. So let's start. Lilith as a being is, as I pre previously said, spirit who originates in a proto-Semitic religion as a hostile spirit of the wilderness. And it has his evolution. Lamastu and Lilitu in Sumeria or Lilkalitu. Then we go to Lilitu of Akkadians. Then we go to Lili to an Ardat Lili of Sumerians and not Sumerians but Assyrians and then after Assyrians we get Lilith of the Babylonians which in the Babylonian exile according to modern historiography transforms in Lilith as we know her today in Kabbalah. Who is Ninlil then? Ninlil has the same age as Lamashtu and Lilitu, but Ninlil kinda has a different story. Ninlil is the wife of Enlil, the Sumerian god of the winds and heaven. And Ninlil represents underworld deity and wind deity connected to fertility. So how do those two figures, Ninlil and Lilith, relate to each other? So First and foremost, Lilith, aka Lilitu, aka Lilkalitu, and Lamashtu have much bigger continuity than Ninlil. From what we can say, Ninlil stopped being worshipped as Ninlil when Babylonian, a.k.a. Sumerian, a.k.a. Assyrian civilization ended. Those different forms and aspects of Ninlil stopped being venerated and mentioned after Babylonia fell to the Persians. 
pretty much. While hostile spirit of the wilderness, we know today as Lilith and other Semitic peoples had other variations of the name, actually has direct theological and ritual continuity up to this day. Now, our Ninlil and Lilith, the same being, let me explain. They are, but they aren't. You see, the only way I can describe this is with contra-example. So, you have two spirits in uh, modern terminology, Azazel and Paimon. And it is pretty much a consensus in a cult community that Azazel and Paimon are two partially independent aspects of the same bigger spirit, which is technically unreachable. So, when you summon Azazel, into the ritual. Sometimes Paimon will show up. When you summon Paimon, sometimes Azazel will show up. Sometimes Azazel will shift into Paimon. Sometimes Paimon will shift into Azazel. You can call both Azazel and Paimon in the same ritual and presents them as different spirits. But that's a little bit difficult to do. You need to really be in touch with your power in order to do that. The same case is with Nenlil and Lilitu or Lilith. They are two partially independent aspects of the same primordial force. Now, there is a really big warning for people here. Despite of the fact that Azazel and Paimon are two partially independent aspects of the same being, they give technically different noses in many aspects, and they are not summoned for the same things. They have kind of different offices. They are kinda separate, but they are also kinda the same being. The same can be said for Lilith and Ninlil. Now, I called Ninlil only once. And I called Lilith too, many, many times. And what Lilith and Ninlil told me as one being and as two partially independent aspects is that they are one ancient wind blowing in two different directions. Understand this metaphor as you wish. Now, here is a thing. I am not interested in Ninlil at all. But I understand that some people who actually use name Lilith refer to Ninlil. And let me explain what is the difference between those two partially independent aspects of the same being. So Lilith 
which is the spirit or partially independent aspect of this force I work the most with is hostile, wild, primordial spirit of nature and chaos. But Ninlil is kind of that same thing, that same force and that same spirit, but more nurturing, caring and motherly in her behavior. So Ninlil will teach you a little bit different stuff and a little bit different sorcery. But her and Lilith are still kind of the same being. In the same way Azazel and Paimon are still kind of the same being. But when you call them under their names and titles, they will kind of really give you uh, different experience and gnosis a bit. But overview and overlap between experience of working with Ninlil and Lilith is pretty much the same. Now, what I can say is that Lilith is much more extreme. But here is when things get tricky uh, and you cannot separate one for the, from the other. Ninlil, which is kind of more benevolent, earth goddess form of this energy, will kind of shift into more warlike Lilith a lot of the time. And you kind of cannot determine who is who. And now, when I look retroactively, a lot of the time, I understand now what happened. So, I don't work with form Nenlil almost at all, but I acknowledge that this form exists. Also, kind of, Ninlil and Lilith kind of have, as I previously mentioned, different historical forms of development. Uh, they originated within what was once the same culture, but Lilith kind of continued to develop and Ninlil stops to develop. But Lilithu were always the hostile nature spirits and Ninlil was kind of always a goddess. And there was a proof that aspect we know as Ninlil was a goddess. But there is absolutely no proof that any of those gods such as or spirits such as Lamashtu, Lilitu, Lilkalitu, Ardat Lili, Lilith ever had the large following. So what I should conclude at the end of this video. So to keep this really short, since this video is already pretty long and it really took me a lot of time to film, I will t use an example of Azazel, Iblis and Paimon as a counter example to what I'm trying to prove. So Iblis, Paimon and Azazel are three partially independent aspects of the same spiritual force, but they teach really different skills and have really different abilities and even characters. Paimon is really good at teaching arts and sciences, but he is terrible at love magic. He usually teaches his initiates through initiatory uh, use of logic and his rituals tend to be extremely organized and uh, they tend to be really, how I can say, artistic in nature and mathematical. Azazel 
is known as the scapegoat. He is also known as the watcher and the fallen angel. He is known as the maker of sharp, sharp weapons. And Azazel is extremely good at love magic. When sent at problem, Azazel approaches problem much differently than Paimon. Paimon will always use the power of his intellect to solve the issue. When you call Paimon to solve the issue, he will work slowly but effectively. Azazel, on the other hand, will create much more chaotic results and do it much quickly, but it will be really intense and sometimes difficult for the operator to handle. The third aspect of this force, Iblis on the other hand, is really good at curses. He can cast really good love spells, not as good at, as Azazel, but kinda good. He is not completely terrible at love spells as Paimon is. And Iblis is kinda specialized for advanced dark alchemy and baneful magic. So, as you see from this example, Iblis, Paimon and Azazel are three partially independent aspects of the same being, yet they teach really different skills and have really different abilities, and their practical use is really different. So there is no point for the sorcerer to consider them from the practical point of view the same. They are the same from the point of origin, but from the point of magical practice they are not. Let me elaborate and express my thoughts once again. They are three aspects of the same consciousness, but if you give to Azazel requests appropriate for Paimon, your ritual will ultimately fail miserably. If you ask from Paimon to help you in a love spell, it will be the most terrible love spell you ever casted. It will fail 100%. If you ask of Paimon to solve the issue quickly, he probably won't solve it so quickly as you expect. Because working quickly is not his modus operandi. On the other hand, if you call Azazel and Iblis to solve the issue quickly, they indeed will, but it won't be as fine and as gentle as when Paimon does it. So, there is no, once again, practical value of observing Iblis, Azazel and Paimon as one and the same. The same can be said for Lilith and Nenlil. Just like Azazel and Paimon and Iblis, Lilith and Nenlil are two partially independent aspects of the same consciousness. And they originate from the same culture, but there is no practical value in observing them as the same. Nenlil has green earthly energy. She is much more motherly than Lilith and her essence is kinda really different. Lilith, on the other hand, Lilith I work with, is feminine, sexual and powerful. Motherly but also extremely predatory. Much more predatory than Nenlil. Nenlil can also be savage indeed, but Nenlil is not as savage as Lilith is. Lilith is much extreme form and practical application of Lilith's sorcery and Ninlil's, Ninlil's sorcery is really different. So I will finish this video for you with a magical chance to call on Ninlil and experiment with this yourself. Thank you for your time.
Nilil ata eterasta, 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 Nilil ata eterasta. Nilil ata eterasta, Nilil ata eterasta, Nilil ata eterasta. Nilil ata eterasta, Nilil ata eterasta, Nilil ata eterasta. Nilil ata eterasta, Nilil ata eterasta, Nilil ata eterasta.